Ah! Oh, it's you. Hello there. Welcome to the inside of the Vlognosis Mobile. Now, in the past, you might have seen this car guest starring in a few of my vlogs, but I never really talked about it in depth. This car is the Fiat 500E. The E stands for electric. Electric cars have been in the news more and more often these days, but you might be asking yourself, what is it like to actually own one? Well, wonder no more. Today, I will explain it all. Welcome to Lognosis! The Fiat 500e is a sporty, stylish, compact car. And in my opinion, the retro styling looks just as good today as it did when it was first released. Inside, you'll find just as much style as you do outside. A color-keyed dash panel, eye-catching orange stitching and stripes on the seats, and plenty of retro design cues. Even though the car seems small from the outside, there's actually enough room in here to sit fully upright like a full-sized car. The steering wheel is perfectly positioned, and it's actually a very comfortable car to sit in. The key fob features an actual real key that you put into a real ignition. The instrument cluster is very easy to read. You can also set it up to display how much power you're using, one of two trip odometers, or tire pressure. The entertainment system in this car sounds surprisingly good. You can play music through a USB stick, CD, or through the radio, satellite, FM, or AM. The climate control system is very well laid out. The buttons are easy to operate while driving without taking too much of your focus off the road. If you want a certain temperature, select auto and then simply adjust the display to whatever temperature you like. Pushing any of the other buttons takes you into a manual mode where you can adjust the fan, where the vents are blowing, recirculate the air. You also have seat heaters and right below it, the fog light button. The gear selector in this car reminds me of something straight out of a Ferrari or Lamborghini. You've got these stylish push buttons. Simply put your foot on the brake and put it into drive. To change a gear, all you do is simply press the button and a little light will illuminate right above the gear you've selected. It's a very easy to operate and elegant solution. The rear seats are, mm, they're adequate. It's a little tight on space. In a pinch, you can fit two adults back here, or perhaps some of your feathered friends. This car is a hatchback, which comes in handy when, for example, loading a dumpster dive haul. If you need more room, you can simply fold down both rear seats, remove this little sunshade, and presto, you've just created enough space, I don't know, to take a nap in. Under the hood, there's uh, really not much to see, which is a good thing. No oil changes, no spark plugs, no belts, no filters, no transmission flushes, no radiator fluid. I haven't touched a thing under this hood in the three years that I've owned it. Keeping this car running has been as easy as plugging it in. Believe it or not, there are thousands of locations to charge your Fiat 500e. In the Los Angeles area where I live, you don't have to look far to find one. A full charge gets you a little over 100 miles of range, which is adequate for most commutes or running errands. Now I know what you're thinking. Sure, this car will get me there, but it's probably really slow and boring, right? On the contrary, the 0 to 60 on this car is a lot of fun. Just don't be testing the 0 to 60 too often or you'll be spending a lot of money on tires. All right, so let's get down to brass tacks. There are pluses and minuses to just about everything in life. So let's answer the great question here. Should you consider 
owning a Fiat 500e? And also, how about owning an electric car in general? The number one reason to consider this particular electric car at the moment, at least on the resale market, is price. These things are going dirt cheap. This car retails for around $35,000, which is way too much to pay. Most of the Fiat 500Es that enter the resale market are off lease returns, like this one will be very shortly. There were special deals on leasing, which is why the majority of them were leased instead of purchased. The advantage for you now is that instead of paying $35,000, i have seen this model go for between five dollars and $10,000 on the resale market. Oftentimes with very low miles, 15,000 to 25,000 miles, and they're all in like new condition. So would I pick one up used? Yes, definitely. At that price, it makes sense. Would I buy one new today and pay full price? Absolutely not. Because for around the same price, now you can pick up the Tesla Model 3 or the Chevy Bolt, both of which have much better range than this car does. And they're a little bit bigger. You get the extra two doors, a little bit more space. But more importantly, they also feature quick charging capabilities, which is something the Fiat 500e lacks. Another advantage of this car and any electric car, you don't have any fuel costs. There are plenty of places to charge out in public for free. Nothing like a free tank of gas every day, right? Or if you're lucky enough to live in a place where you can install solar panels, you can charge your car from the sun. It doesn't get any better than that. And that's another positive is a car like this or any electric car is good for the environment. Another advantage, electric cars are quick, powerful, and fun to drive. And they're quiet too on the road. And the list of advantages goes on and on. You don't have smog checks, oil changes, filters, spark plugs, belts, transmission fluids, you know, all, all of these expenses that you incur with an internal combustion engine are gone. And an electric car is so reliable. I have not had one single issue the whole time I've driven this car. It's, it's been a dream. I think by now the technology is rock solid. There's no reason to be scared of it. I say go for it. Oh yeah, another positive, depending upon your location, some places have preferred parking for electric cars. One of the cities near where I live, you can park at a meter for free during certain hours. Some of the stores have upfront parking reserved for electric vehicles. And if they have free charging, for example, at a store, it's usually closer to the door. So you get VIP parking or free parking. And at least in my state, I'm allowed to use in this car the carpool lane, even if it's just me in the car. So there are a lot of advantages. Now let's go into some of the uh, disadvantages. Disadvantage number one, and this has to do with this Fiat 500e more so than electric cars in general. Because for example, the Teslas, the new Chevy Bolt, they don't have to deal with problems like this. This car gives you about 100 miles of range. For most purposes, that's fine. But in all honesty, it's just, it's right at that point where it does get a little bit frustrating at times. Now, 200 miles, in my experience, that's the magic number. If you can get an electric car that will give you 200 miles or above in range, you don't have a lot of these little frustrations that I've experienced in the past. The other sort of related issue to that number one issue is this particular car has no quick charging capability at all, which means to charge the battery, it takes a long time. You have to leave it charging overnight on a wall socket charge. If you have a charger that runs on 220 volt, I believe I've charged this car from zero to 100% in about four hours on one of those level two chargers. But 
in the long run, it's not something you want to deal with all of the time. So if you do a lot of driving and you can swing it, go ahead and get a Tesla Model 3. Go ahead and get a Chevy Bolt. It's really worth the money. Another disadvantage, and it's a minor one for most people, since this is a two-door, you don't have the ability to participate in ride-sharing programs such as Uber or Lyft. They all require you to have a four-door car. Another negative, at least of the Fiat 500e, is the ride in this thing is kind of stiff. You feel the jolts a lot more than you do in your average car. Test drive one, make sure it's going to be comfortable enough. The next negative, you know, I, I think I'm out of negatives. That's, that's it. Um, really, there aren't a lot of negatives to this car or electric cars in general. I mean, in the past three years that I've owned this thing, I've been very satisfied. A lot more satisfied than almost any car I've ever owned before in my entire life. And that says a lot. Electric cars are quick, they're efficient, they're fun to drive, they're quiet. I mean, what's not to like? It's, it's awesome. If you're thinking to yourself, oh, you know, an electric car, it's, it's going to be boring. It's going to be slow. Why would I ever be interested in a car like that? No, those are all, those are all misconceptions. Do yourself a favor. Try one out for a while. I think that you will be absolutely amazed at the experience. Anyway, it looks like it's uh, getting kind of dark out now, so I'll wrap up today's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to hearing from you in the comment section. Take care, everybody.